Hello folks, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at a fixed blade. This is the Seeker 2 by LW Knives. This is the first knife I've had from that company, and uh, it's a nice big fixed blade, full flat grind. It comes in three different colors of handle scales, green, black, and a white and black together kind of modeled together. This is a good size uh, survival style knife. It can do an awful lot of different things. Comes in a off-brand Kydex sheath and uh, off-brand tech lock. <laughs> it's not really a tech lock, but similar to it. And uh, this knife is something I think you're going to be interested in. VG10 blade steel at less than $50 US, actually much closer to $40 US. So stick around for the full review of the Seeker 2. As I was getting ready to record this, I did notice that Gearbest has the Seeker 1, or the Seeker without a number, except for they're not calling it that. In fact, it's got no name at all. It's just sort of a no-name knife in their list. But what you're seeing is a black wash knife with a black wash handle and the handle of the blade, you know, one thing. And then it's got like paracord, you know, wrapped inside the handle a little bit. So you can look for it. And if you look at the graphics that are, you know, on the blade, you'll see a small LW. And then you'll be able to find the word seeker on there as well if you look at the pictures really carefully. So if you're looking for LW Seeker, you can get it at Gearbest. I'll put a link in the description below. So here we are. Fake Kydex, fake tech lock. It works okay for how it is. You, know, you squeeze that together, open it up, you put you know, you put it on your belt, close it up. You move this lever back over, closes it, holds it on. This is just some kind of ABS plastic or whatever. This is very much like um, Kydex, except for it's an off-brand. And it holds the knife fairly well. You, know, you can't hear it rattling. It's a good hold. And, you know, it's a decent sheath. I just don't like this thing. What I would do is I'm going to use some of my own Kydex, you know, after the whole summer, after I've visited my mom and everything. And I'm going to make a deeper dangle thing so that the my belt will be up here. So the most of the weight of the knife will be below my belt instead of most of the weight of the knife being above my belt. You know what I mean? So there you go. Full flat grind. Really cool swedge here. And um, it's a really nice knife. I like this steel on here. You know, <laughs> who doesn't like VG10, right? And uh, all, everything's rounded. I'm going to test this thing. I'm going to try batoning with it. I'm going to see... This looks like a survival knife to me, and I'm going to see if it'll function a little bit as a bushcraft knife as well. I'm going to uh, have to strike the ferro rod on some sharper edge, and I'm thinking I'm going to try with this little edge right there. Uh, first, if that doesn't work, we're going to have to try something else. I might have to grind a flat spot on the spine of the blade somewhere that I can use for it to scrape on. Proprietary screws here not terribly fond of that. I did go to Harbor Freight in uh, Port Huron, Michigan last summer. I like to drive through Port Huron. It's about an hour north of Win of Detroit. Detroit, Windsor's on the Canadian side. Port Huron, Sarnia is on the Canadian side in Ontario. It's much less traffic up there around uh, Port Huron and Sarnia. And, so I, and it's closer actually too for the trip that I have to make. So we like going through there. I went to that Harbor Freight and I bought a set of screwdriver tips that were all for security and they got some three-way screws and I, all I need to do is grind the top off of one of those so it goes down a little bit. It's a lot like a Phillips screw and I'm just going to grind the tip of it down except for instead of Phillips being four ways it's got three and then that'll fit right in there and I'll be able to take these off and stuff. G10 handle scales, 
really good feel in the hand and this extra sneak up spot, you know, to do some work. You get a little close to that sharp corner sometimes, so you got to be careful when you're doing that. I could just sort of take some uh, a file and just take a bit of that edge off so it isn't quite that sharp right on the edge. If I need to, if I find out I'm starting to nick myself, I don't think it's going to be an issue. And it's nice, heavy behind the grind as a good survival outdoors knife. Does it cut okay the way it is? Well, let's find out. No problem cutting paper. Here's some molly banding. It's actually a little wider than most molly. This is about an inch wide. Zips through that really, really easily. No problem there. Paracord. Yeah, let's do a few layers of paracord here. Four layers of paracord. Zips through all of those. No problem. Oh, one of them fell to the floor. No problem at all. I'm not going to cut on this little table. My wife's not going to like that. And I don't have a cutting board handy. You already saw how good it works. It's a nice, nice knife. I like it. This jimping up here feels good. It's not too aggressive. It gives you an added little bit of grip. If you want to just hold back here, my hand is large, bordering, bordering on extra large. European sizes, it's between 9 and 10. So just in this main area back here, there's some knife sticking out. Lots of room from my big hands. Some of the extra large hands, you know, I think you're still going to do okay, but it might be a little bit risky for really big extra large hands. Uh, might, you might find it, not risky, you might find it a little bit too you know, small for you, but it's a really good knife for medium and large size hands, which comes out to almost every guy out there. Yeah, VG10 is listed right down there. It says Seeker 2 across the uh, Ricasa right there. Your plunge line is nice and clean. This uh, sneak up choil acts like a sharpener's choil, and the swedge gives a nice artistic effect. And then everything's rounded on the blade everywhere else. Really good feel on the hand. Um, what are the pros? Well, I already mentioned a bunch of them. I really like this extra little pommel, this sharp spot back here. You can use that as a persuader or to scrape some wood if you need to scrape something, something not quite too sharp. You know, nice and hard piece of steel right there on the end. You know, it's a good knife. Let's talk about the sizes and give you guys all the dimensions, guys and gals. I'll give you all the dimensions right here. We've got a drop point blade. It does come down slowly ever so much. It's not a flat spine, so it's not a straight spine. It is a drop point. Your cutting edge, 11.2 centimeters, 4.4 inches. I didn't get the full blade length. It's very close to the same because, you know, the G10 sticks out a little bit right here. Almost identical to the cutting edge. Uh, the thickness is five millimeters, 0.2 of an inch, nice heavy spine. The edge behind the grind is 0.8 millimeters, 0 0.031 inches. So that's a little bit heavy, which is okay on a bigger knife. And so that's okay for this knife, although I'd like it to be closer to 7.7 7 instead of 0.8. It's a little thicker than I'd like, but that makes it a robust edge, a strong edge. The uh, handle thickness here, the thickest spot is 1.8 centimeters. That's 0.7 of an inch, almost three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, your handle length, the G10 to the tip of this sharp spot back here. It's not too sharp, but right there. 12.6 centimeters, 4.97 inches, basically five inches. Uh, your gripping area right down here is 9.4 centimeters, 3.7 inches plus the spot here. Your total length of the knife, 24 centimeters, nine and a half inches. That's rounded just slightly, just very barely rounded. So 9.47 or whatever. The weight of this knife, 239 grams, 8.4 ounces. You add the sheath in, 331 grams, 11.7 ounces. So it's not too terribly much for in your belt and stuff. Uh, it's cheaper now than what I paid for it. You can get this guy on DHgate for $41.58 US. Or at AliExpress, you can get it for $41.99 US. So that's very much the same price. So take your pick which store you like. That's in green and in black. They also have a version where the handle scale is a black and white mix. You can only get that right now I can find on DHgate 
uh, for $46.30. So you pay a little bit more for that. I paid close to $50 for mine, so I got ripped off. <laughs> My own fault. I didn't look around enough. Either that or the price just dropped in the last little while. All rounded edges. I like that. That's kind of cool. I don't necessarily love the proprietary screws, but I can deal with those with uh, the screwdriver that I talked about. It's comfortable in hand. The jipping really helps. The the uh, lines in the G10 here really help with the grip as well. You got an infinite number of gripping options. You can hold this knife any which way and it's going to be comfortable. Um, I like that point on the pommel. Um, I like this nice lanyard hole here. It's big enough for um, 1100 paracord to fit in there just barely. You got to melt the end and make it a little bit smooth and you can fit 1100 paracord through there. Um, that's good if you want something that heavy. I like that the handle scales are removable. You know, say you're, you know, skinning an animal or gutting it or whatever, and you get all kinds of crud and things between the handle scales and the blade. You know, you can take it off, do a nice cleaning. It's a great knife. The only things I don't like is there's no flat spot by default that's going to work good for striking a ferro rod that I know of. We'll test it. And I mentioned the other thing. I don't like this tech lock, the fake tech lock being especially that it's down low if they found a way to mount it up higher so that it would be closer to the center of gravity or so most of the center of gravity would be below the belt instead of above the belt i'd like that better so there you go i did some cutting let's go outside and do some more cutting and see what i think of that eh all right there's not a lot of wind today hopefully the sound comes through and uh, i think we're going to be okay with that I'm not going to show this on my belt. You know, it doesn't fit good that, that well anyway. So, yeah, forget it. Got a piece of wood here. Piece of, uh, I don't know, some kind of pine, evergreen, spruce, something. Probably spruce. And I'm going to try to baton it. And as I always say, I'm not going to baton right down the main, biggest, thickest part of it. That's silly. I'm going to baton a little piece off that I'm going to use for kindling. And just keep taking off small pieces because I want the edge to last as long as I can. Use the knife at the lowest risk all the time. And that's not only when I'm out doing my bushcraft stuff. I do the same thing in my videos so that I maintain that habit. It's a habit I'm always going to try to keep. Keep your edge good as long as you can while accomplishing your goals. doing actually pretty wide right now but once I'm through a ways you know I'm gonna try just pulling with my hands let it drop on the grass that's not gonna hurt it that's actually pretty big everything looks good and feels good still you know, and then I make my kindling so this is clearly a knife that's designed for a sort of survival, maybe even tactical, but it's working very well for bushcraft stuff. Let's see if this edge will let me do any uh, feather sticks. I could go on and on for a long time, but look at that. Nothing wrong with that. That works well. I don't need to bore you for two days, right? This is hardwood. This is my apple tree. So if I have to cross baton or make a notch, I tend to take out pieces like this and I slowly get through the wood that way. Just slowly, small bites. Don't try to do too much at once. Just take it through. We'll get there. You know, so you make yourself a nice V and you keep doing that all the way around until you get through. See it like that and you just keep chewing through it. If you got a really long piece, you can just whack it against something. 
and it'll probably break. But this one's not long enough. I don't have enough pressure yet. And then eventually, you break yourself a piece off. Remember, use your knife as little as possible to accomplish your goal. I didn't need to cut all the way through. I got other wood I can use to whack on it. Once I got a nice start to it, whack it off. All right, guys, the only other thing I want to check real quick is, can I throw sparks? As I expected, no, I cannot. So there you go. I love this knife. It just needs that one sharp edge to strike a ferro rod. And we've got a very good uh, survival knife, tactical knife, bushcraft knife, all in one. Okay, we've come back inside. I love this knife. I love it a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this video with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber, uh, click on that uh, logo button right down here in the corner. Uh, it'll get you to the subscribe and uh, please hit that bell so you'll be uh, notified of every video that's by the subscribe button and uh, you know if you got any questions ask them it's going to take a while for me to get back to you sometimes this summer I'm going to be very very busy I'm going to put out less videos I'm going to visit my my mom she's got cancer I'm going to visit her back home and you know I'm going to put out two three videos a week and I might not be around to answer the comments Come September, we're going to go back full bore and the channel's going to be going full speed again then. But I'm not going away. I'm just slowing down for a couple months. Remember, always cut towards your chum. That is your friend, your buddy, the other guy, and not your thumb.